Good morning once again, and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and let's go through some of the stories making headlines across Nigeria today. I'm going to start with the Punch newspapers, uh, just before we introduce our guest. Uh, yes, it uh, should be on your screen. Yes, it is. Um, it says here, the big one, Buhari signing of PIB. Uh, petrol may sell for 300 naira. Federal government to decide on subsidy and others today. Signing of PIB has ended for all subsidy. Market forces to determine price, says oil marketers. Minister will tell Nigerians the next step today, says the aide. And also OPEC, NATI, others applaud new law. Algon carpets governors as local governments get 4.85 trillion naira in three years. Our debts will keep rising, revenues declining, says the federal government. And uh, Plateau Killings, northern groups, one federal government, 13 more suspects arrested. Nigeria records 37,819 cholera cases. Death toll hits 1,178. And also um, outside Nigeria now, seven die. Taliban renames country Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Uh, Nigeria gets 698,000 more AstraZeneca doses. And um, also this morning, Hush Poppy Pro Panel submits amended report on Kiari. Super TV CEO family accuses Lagos police of cover-up, hires Ozekome, and uh, NSCDC arrests 100 recruitment scam victims and kingpin. Let's turn to the Daily Sun newspaper. Headline reads, Coup against Shoneko confirmed our fears about June 12, says IBB. Buhari Kalu Abdusalami Atiku hail ex-president at 80. Two die, 14 bosses raised in Anambra tank explosion. Above the headlines there, it reads, Governors Ikpazu Bello clash over repeal of 1999 constitution. Ex-AGF Adoki links marginalization to secessionist agitation. Sanusi here says, I am prepared for jail after leaving CBN, denies going into politics. ADF Lords Enugu Government, State Assembly over anti-open grazing bill. Plateau killings, enough of empty threats, Northern elders tell Buhari Lalong. Own tolerates religious violence, again, Governor Wands. Indonesia torture, Nigerian ambassadors express fears over foreign service officers' lives, urge federal government, UN, to be thorough in handling case. PDP, Pandef, others kick as Buhari ascends to PIB. Clark says he's disappointed. Senate hails the president. Group says it's an assault on Niger Delta. And experts say fuel price hike imminent, with the Punch newspaper earlier saying that the petrol price might get up to 300 naira per litre with the new PIB. Lastly, on the Punch newspaper, federal government releases qualification requests for four airports concession. And now to the Guardian newspapers. PIB assent, mixed feelings, fresh challenges, trail legislation. Still on the Guardian. Uh, OPEC says it will open door to new investment. Host communities kick, decry exclusion. And PDP decries uh, presidential assent despite outcry, seeks urgent uh, amendment. WHO alerts to fake COVID-19 vaccines as federal government receives more doses, begins vaccination. Doctor's strike continues as court adjourns case to September 15. Bandits kill 30, abduct 15 in Zamfara, Katsina, Kaduna. Anambra PDP un unveils uh, Advisory Council, Elders Forum, Campaign Committee for Uzibo, and IPOB suspended sit at home uh, still grounds businesses in Southeast. Uh, finally, just crisis rages as a governor restates imposition of curfews. Uh, I think that's all that we can share on The Guardian uh, this morning. Um, let's take a quick look at the stories making the headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper. And the headline is still about the PIB. And uh, it says NNPCPF PPPRA to go as Buhari signed PIB into law. Ascent, major victory for Nigeria, according to the National Assembly. Experts are urging to get the right persons to implement the act. Lupeng says we're sure... No job losses. PDP Pandev kick as OPEC. Others hail action. High taxes pushing SME's mortality rates or Shimbajo. Lalong says we won't allow Plateau return to days of religious crisis. 1,178 lives lost as cholera spreads to 28 states. I beg your pardon, that's 23 states. COVID-19 aids workers at risk as Buhari flouts isolation guidelines. 
presidency truly presidents truly isolating that's according to the aid also how bandits abduct 15 students five staff from zamfara college Ecomium as ibb clocks eight today naba says why third force would be difficult in 2023 I believe those are the stories we're going to take a look at this morning. Uh, good morning to our guest, publisher of CKN News, Mr. Chris Wandu. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Fantastic. I want us to begin with uh, one of the biggest stories in Nigeria right now, right after um, the Zamfara kidnap, which is that the president has given his assent to the PIB. Um, reactions to this are mixed. Senate, uh, you know, praising the president, saying this would attract investment into Nigeria's oil sector. While other groups like the PANDEF says, you know, this is disastrous. This is siphoning money from the South to give to the North. And that the controversial sections of the bill should have been amended before the president went on to give his assent. And also experts warning that the um, whole situation with the PIB would mean that fuel price in Nigeria would increase to as much as 300 naira per litre. How do you react? Yes, um, first and foremost, um, let me say that uh, there's no perfect law anywhere in the world. You cannot have a perfect law. Even the laws, um, Constitution of the United States of America, over, after over 200 years, is still being amended. Um, that of the um, United Kingdom, uh, though unwritten, um, but tomorrow you still have amendments. So uh, for me, first and foremost, I would say uh, I commend the federal government for the signing uh, the president for the signing of that law. That law has been in existence for close to 20 years, if you know. Every successful, uh, successive um, National Assembly um, take it to a point and they leave. And what happens is that they start all over again because there's, this, that, that, there's no uh, movement of any law um, that, uh, that couldn't be passed by a particular um, National Assembly for it to be taken up from where they stopped um, the, the next national assembly. So first and foremost, I would say that yes, it's good that that law has been signed into. There might there will be defects and there were defects, but uh, we will be, maybe with a bad uh, bad water, I would say no. But the only challenge for me there is that, um, especially the areas when it concerns the uh, what gets to the um, host communities, and I thought that um, we would have it at least we would have is the five percent. But um, the National Assembly, uh, especially in the uh, Senate, in their wisdom, decided to uh, leave it at 3%, while they, I think the ha uh, House of Reps said uh, uh, 5%. And I thought that where, during the harmonization period, both of them could have come together to agree on at least 5%. But you cannot blame that on the president. If the president signed it, fine. Because you have the representatives of the people, of the people there. And we expected that they would have done, uh, done the needful, and they couldn't do it. Even most of the legislators from the South South, um, or those from the southern part of Nigeria, who you expect to fight vigorously against this, voted uh, for 3% for whatever reason. So, um, what do you expect the president to do? To just keep quiet and leave the law pending when it should be amended? And the only other, the other challenge is what is uh, going to the North. Um, the oil exploration, 30%. And you continue to ask yourself, where is equity? Where is the fair play? And that will keep on um, raging all sorts of controversies in the, in the years to come. Um, you are, uh, you, you are budgeting about 30% for oil exploration in the North. But the host communities who over the years, which over the years, have been in serious, serious um, the problem with uh, the kind of environmental uh, hazard and terrible situation we find uh, on ground are just getting about 3%. So that, for me, uh, is neither here nor there, and it's not good enough. But we also continue to question people of the South, uh, the South, South or Niger data that all the funds that have been made available so far, either through the, NDC, and the, uh, the various uh, ministries, or uh, intervention um, forces, what have then been used? You cannot see anything on ground in the Niger Delta, and that should worry. And that is why I, where I think the agitation should start from. But um, saying that the president shouldn't sign that, uh, to me, I don't think it's, uh, it's fair enough for this person. Ten percent derivation fund. I forgot to mention earlier. Um, all right, Chris uh, Wandu. Let's also talk uh, security now. As always, it seems like we discuss security every morning. 
Um, but, you know, there's reports of uh, violence, killings in Plateau State and also in Zamfara. It says uh, 30 people, I think that's on the Guardian this morning, it says 30 people killed uh, in um, Zamfara, Kad Katsina and Kaduna, and 15 abducted. Um, it doesn't seem to be getting better. Talking about things in Nigeria is just like um, it's just like a, a broken record. Um, you could continue talking on daily basis about the challenges of insecurity across Nigeria, not just in the north. Now, um, my heart goes out to the uh, families of those uh, that were killed in Plateau uh, a few days ago. Um, Muslims um, uh, they were coming back from uh, an event in Bauchi and uh, were attacked in. Uh, in Jaws, and uh, close to about 30 of them were killed. And um, it, it's irrespective of whatever um, situation you find yourself, the taking of flesh is a No life is worth being killed. And that is, that are for me, whether a Muslim, whether a Christian, whether a pagan, uh, as a Nigerian, nobody uh, needs to be killed for whatever reason. And um, that just happened. And um, but I like the swiftness with which the security agencies uh, have been reacting to that killing. And I hope and I believe and I wish that is how they will react to other killings across Nigeria. Don't forget within that community also, there have been instances. There was a procession. There, there, there was a, a burial procession. That was what happened. Some people have been killed earlier on, a, a day or two before then, uh, by yeah, unknown government or whatever. Chris Wando. Uh, sorry, to, sorry to step in here. Um, uh, I, I've also, of course, I'm, I'm sure you were going to mention that it, it seemed like it was a reprisal attack, you know, after what had happened a couple of days earlier. Um, and you also mentioned uh, that you like how the security agencies have been reacting to, you know, the recent one in, in Plateau State. But, you know, it, it, doesn't it bother you or any other person that we don't seem to have a culture of arresting perpetrators of these crimes um, and that's the reason there continues to be these killings and reprisal attacks. That we cannot boast now, in, currently in Nigeria of 10 or 15 or 20 people that have been arrested for wiping out villages or for killing you know, people in communities and have been sent to jail. We, the, Nigeria can't boast of any of these people in, you know, and, and say that these people have been sent to prison currently. And if there were arrests made after that attack a couple of days earlier, do you think there would have been reprisal attacks? That was where I was heading to. I was saying that there was a previous attack that led to that reprisal attack. That attack is not justified. But if the yeah, security agencies have also done the need for, in trying to move into this area and make sure that those responsible for the initial attack were arrested, then the people will look at it from the point that, yes, um, the security agencies are doing something to people. I don't think that would have been the second, that second attack. So what I'm saying, in essence, is that we should be able to, the security agencies should be up and running in their doings. Yeah, because when you're not seen to be taking side in any conflict, that becomes a problem. If you understand what I mean. In the in Jaws, there are so many um, uh, military formation in, in Jaws. That is the Operation um, Safe Heaven, which is the military where there is, um, I, I think, one of the TVs also in Jaws, apart from the police and other security agencies. And how come that we lack the intelligence, and when I mean intel, to be able to know that such a thing will happen if those people were going through that route? If we have security agencies with enough intel, probably those that those that we are killed would have been asked to reroute re -route their movement. If you understand what I'm trying to reroute their movement, instead of moving towards where you had that procession of um, uh, uh, that burial. So. It, it goes to show you the level of um, the, the level of intel within our security agencies. Everybody is just doing this one thing and nothing is happening. Look at yesterday now. How the students were also kidnapped again uh, um, in the north, and about four security personnel in those schools were were also killed. Where are we headed? For how many days? Or for how many months? Or how many weeks? Will we continue talking at the level of insecurity? And it has not numbers. Nobody cares. What you see. 50 people killed in Zamfara. Nobody would do it. The human beings are not turning to numbers. So there's no level of empathy at all about the loss of lives. And that, to me, is terrible. It's very, very, very terrible and condemnable. 
Right. Okay, um, let's take a look at these other stories here um, that we've seen on the papers. When we take a look at the Daily Sun, we see that um, the anti-open grazing bill um, seems to be gaining traction here. And um, the ADF has lauded the Enugu State Government and the Assembly over the anti-open grazing bill. And um, remember that when these governors met, they had set a deadline for September um, to make sure that they all um, go ahead with the anti-open grazing bill to make sure that they eliminate the um, menace of farmers and headsmen clashes in Nigeria. Um, seeing the way states seem to be adopting this um, one after the other, um, do you see a situation where um, all the states in the southeast would ban open grazing and that that wouldn't really cause a clash between the southerners and the northerners? Every state has the right to determine its security architecture and what it thinks is best for it. So if the South is feel that um, the uh, anti-open grazing bill is the way to go to preserve the life and properties of their people, all well and good. You cannot tell me the kind of security I can put in my house. If I decide I might go for Malam um, to guide me, if I have enough money, I can go to the police and seek um, the poli police protection and rest of them in as much as I get myself secured. So if the states on the south uh, is to feel that that is the way to go, oh, well, and good. Don't forget that one of the raging war in, uh, in North Central, especially in Benue State, it was because of the anti grazing bill that was passed by the autumn government. And it was very likely um, opposed by certain individuals who didn't want to see that law. Because the best, that reduced, you mean that bill was uh, that bill passing through law. It reduced drastically the attacks that was going on on a daily basis in Benue State. I'm sure you are aware of that. It reduced it completely. Yes, there have been attacks here and there, but it wasn't as it was before. So that is the way to go. If the southern, don't also, the same thing happened in Ondo State. Governor Akre Dulu um, came out swiftly and said, I don't want anybody in our bushes. I don't want any open grazing in my state. And and he walked swiftly towards that. And that also stopped at a point when was almost turning to another uh, uh, battleground for killings uh, by suspected headsmen and rest of them. So if that is the way to go, all well and good. Every, every state government should do everything humanly possible to be able to secure the latter. It was very, very bad in a boy state. On a daily basis, people were killed in their tents and in their hundreds. And nobody said anything. The federal government seems to be uh, incapacitated in doing the right thing by sending enough security. How many policemen do you have across Nigeria? That you can send across Nigeria. So the, the states are not taking the initiative, which is what we have been talking about, that they shouldn't be waiting for the federal government to police the army. Okay. The state governors also should rise up to the occasion that the chief security officers of their states, and they should do the needful. All right, Mr. Wando, let's uh, quickly also get your thoughts on uh, the crisis in Afghanistan. It says it has been uh, renamed Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan uh, by the Taliban. Uh, quickly also share your thoughts on that. It's quite unfortunate what is happening in Afghanistan. Um, President Biden came out last night to give a statement where he endorsed his initial um, withdrawal of troops. Uh, where he endorsed the, uh, his initial directive to make sure that every American soldier uh, leaves uh, Afghanistan. But, withdrawal, yes, but the, the way they did it probably was what they did say what will happen. And that is where the Americans are not um, having all this kind of bashes and um, uh, combination from across the globe. You are withdrawing about 1,500 to 2,000 uh, 2, um, uh, troops, the last they are left there. Now the crisis has started. You are trying to send another uh, 3,000, close to 3,600. That is the problem. So the American got this practically wrong. If you know that you know that Afghanistan is a breeding ground for um, for uh, all these terrorists, and that was why in the about twenty years ago to make sure that they stay the kind and make sure that there's no level of um, terrorism coming from Afghanistan. That way, uh, Bin Laden, uh, some Bin Laden, and the rest of it. But the way the Americans withdrew from um, Afghanistan left everything. President Biden said that, oh, we have 300,000 um, well-trained um, army um, of, of, uh, of Afghan, uh, Afghan soldiers who can take up anybody. Or oh, the Taliban have only 8,000. At the end of it, all that he believes that um, 
the Afghan soldiers be able to repel any attack. But look at what happened. Immediately withdrew. The whole provinces fell like a puff card. Taliban were taking provinces that on the, the president, uh, Ghani, has to run at um, 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 uh, Kabul, uh, the state capital. It's just unfortunate uh, that you are going to have a lot of material crisis. You saw people fly out of planes um, um, from the sky and drop them, and it is really terrible. All right, Mr. Wandu. I hope that um, um, very soon. Uh, <laughs> okay, hopefully we get more perspective uh, on international this. International community are meeting today in Qatar. Let's see what they'll come out with. Uh, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, quickly before I go, I wanted us to talk about this story we saw on the Daily Sun. It says that Governor Okizi Pazu of Abia, as well as the Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello, yesterday disagreed over the 1999 Constitution. And this was at the fifth edition of a symposium that occurred in Abuja. So the issue here is that Okizi Pazu is saying that it's important for us to go ahead and, you know, scrap the constitution that we have, you know, saying this is a military formation and that we need to create something that is truly of the people. While um, Governor um, Yahya Bello said it's unrealistic for us to repeal the Nigerian constitution at this time. And I want us to tie it to a NINAS um, convention or match that's supposed to happen in September at the United Nations General Assembly in, in New York, you know, asking for a repeal of the Nigerian constitution and for referendum for, you know, states in Nigeria to be able to determine if they want to be part of, you know, the Nigerian entity or break away. So um, looking at what um, the perspective of the Kogi State Governor is, do you think it's unrealistic for us to repeal our constitution, have a new one, inject in a referendum, and, you know, all these things, and if it could solve the agitations in the country? I totally agree with Governor Ibazo on that. Um, um, Governor... Uh, Yaya Bello is just playing to the gallery. Even in his, in his inner mind, that he's not saying the truth. The constitution as we have it now is not working. And that is why we have a whole lot of agitation left, right, and send. So the ELA will be able to do something about it better. But what we cannot be looking at is the frame. But how long does it take to uh, repair the constitution? Don't forget that the, even the National Assembly have already set up a, a, a committee in motion to be able to look at amending some sessions of Constitution. The constitution as we have it is not by Nigerian people. They say, oh, they, although the beginning is that constitution, you see, oh, we, the Nigerian, the people of Nigeria, we, Nigeria, who are the we, the, the people of Nigeria? That is a, a constitution that was lost by the military, by just a few a, a people that came to that. So I believe that if we must stem what is happening now, in the, I, even the security, security and the rest of them boils down to our constitution. Because when you see some light of lopsidedness on the part of the constitution, people don't have the sight of uh, the sense of belonging. If you understand what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. so every see, just look through. Is it security? Is it a policing? Is it um, uh, uh, derivation funds? Is it a um, share formula? Name it. Everything is so lopsided as it's presently. So until we be able to do something about our constitution, the better for us. But the problem we can ask us that. What is the time frame that we can put to that? That may just be the problem. Yeah. But the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, as it is at its stage, presently cannot take us anywhere. All right. Chris Wanda, thank you very much for joining us uh, this Tuesday morning. Thanks thank for speaking you. and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, we wish you a great day ahead. Thank you very much for having me. Do have Absolutely. a nice day. You too. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When mm. we come back, uh, we're going straight uh, in, in history or back in history. I'm going back to the year 1998 to tell you about one of, you know, the most popular U.S. presidents um, and some of the things that he did on this day. And I'm going to talk about a story that still shocks me. It's about, about 500 bombings in, Afghanistan, in Bangladesh on this day in history. Stay with us.